This is part 3 of 4 of an old Nick Faldo VHS golf lesson. If you missed part 1, 2, or 3, I'll put links in the description. This video is on the driver, fairway woods, irons, and chipping. Enjoy. Right, we're now out on the golf course and the first club out the bag is the driver. We're on the 10th tee of Valderrama, which will be the 10th hole in the Volvo Masters, which we play each year at the end of the season. We've chosen this hole because it's uh, a good shape hole and we've got some bunkers in the distance there which we can use to uh, indicate how I line up. Now, one thing that we didn't touch on on the range was really the ball position because this varies tremendously with the, each club that we use and also the variety of shots that we wish to play. So now we're on the golf course, we're going to spend a little bit more time showing you that. And with the driver, what we're trying to do, once we've set ourselves up parallel to our target again, our ball position is going to fall somewhere around our left heel to left in step. As a personal thing, obviously some people try to hit the ball a little higher or whatever. The driver, of course, you're trying to hit on the upswing now. So that's why we have a little bit further forward than normal. And again, we've, as we discussed, our posture and our alignment, I'm going to align myself down the left side of the fairway, but my target is somewhere towards the middle to, to the right-hand side as the hole shapes around the corner. Another thing, which is probably one of the most important things that all good players do, is they have a pre-shot routine. And I, like many others, we, we start from behind the, hop, behind the ball, sorry, and we picture the shot that we're trying to hit, and we visualize the shape and everything, and then more important, we pick out a target in the distance that's gonna keep us on track and gives us a good guideline. Right, so I'll go through the steps that I use. I stand behind the ball, and simply, my target is now down the right-hand side of the bunker, so once I then step away from this, I'm now started into my pre-shot routine. So I've pictured the target. I put my club head down exactly where I want the ball to go. Down the right-hand side of that trap, I take my stance, so I'm nice and comfortable. So I'm perfectly happy that I'm ready to go. Now all I need is a little bit of motion to get the club to move away. And I need one swing thought in the back swing. So I, I usually think of my hips to get those turning correctly, and here we go. There we go, and it all went pretty good. As you can see, I've kept my follow through. I'm not trying, never trying to force the driver. I try to keep the same swing pattern, same rhythm, and hit a good shot. Nick, we were confronted with a par five here, which requires a fairway wood. We've got about 230 yards to go uphill. So certainly I think it's very important for golfers to look at the lie before they take out the club. I think if the lie is very tight, they might want to use a more lofted fairway wood, but you've got a very good lie there, so I think a three wood's an excellent choice. So let's set up to the ball there and see how we're going to go about that. Okay. First thing, as we can see, the ball is positioned very much like a tee shot because we are trying to sweep the ball. We're not trying to hit down on it. And also there is a fair amount of weight, probably maybe 60, 40, placed on the right side there. This helps us to hit up on the ball without literally trying to scoop it in the air. Now, very important, the rhythm and balance in the golf swing here. And as, as you'll see when Nick makes the swing here, he'll really work hard on maintaining good rhythm and good tempo. Okay, I'll go through my pre-shot routine again, lining up, picking my target just left of the pin, and setting myself right on that target, move the weight back a little bit, nice and comfortable, and here we go. Tempo is all important. Maintain your balance and swing to a complete follow through.
And now we come to the long irons, which is the nemesis of many club golfers. In actual fact, they're not as difficult as most people make them out to be. You'll see when Nick makes a few practice swings here, how he'll really try to maintain his balance and his rhythm. Most people try to help the ball up in the air because of the little loft on the club. So if you can just let the club do the work and really make sure you have good balance, you won't have too much of a problem. Okay, I'll give it a... I'll have one practice swing here. Saying exactly what David has said, I try to keep my head nice and still and I want a good, powerful follow through. I don't want to be de-accelerating or trying to help it up. I want to be accelerating through the ball. Right, let's see if we can hit one. For a shot like this, I've got a slight breeze coming off the left, so my first thoughts would be I would try and hold it up against that. So I want to have a slightly inside path. So I want to make sure I'm slightly inside and then through. So obviously for that I'm going to have to stay very still on the shot and stay with the shot. Turn fully and release out to the right a little bit. Thanks, Jack. Long irons are harder to strike than fairway woods, so it is vital to stay down and believe that the loft of the club will get the ball airborne. Well, Nick, I think we're into the part of the game that most amateurs need a lot of help on, the pitching part. And, um, you know, somewhere between the sort of 40 and 80 yard shot is where many golfers need a lot of help. I think really they have a lot of fear about these shots where it really is fairly simple. It's a matter, I think, really of understanding the technique to a point where they uh, make a normal golf swing and uh, understand how far they've got to hit it. That's right. I think. We reduce the body movement considerably. We're just going to work with our hands and arms here, even to the extent of ground in our right foot to keep the body still. And the, the one secret that we like to use is we try to hold the club off a little bit, i.e. we're keeping the club head behind the hands. The hands are working faster than the club head all the way through. As we said, we've got to be aggressive with these shots and not quit on it, not try and help it up, but hit firmly through. Exactly. Why don't you hit a few, Nick, and it's... Uh see what we've got. All right, well, we're on the fourth hole of Valderrama here. This is a great example of a, of a pitch, a difficult one over water with bunkers and everything. So we've got to be positive and firm with this. And as we said, I line up the club on my target, on the pin. I stand a little bit open, but I'm nice and firm. Weight a little bit on the, the, the front foot, the left side there. And as I said before, I'm going to pull it through and hold it there through impact keep my head down all the time. There we go, nice crisp shot. We've now moved back 20 yards. The shot remains the, very much the same. All we want to do now is extend the stroke a little bit more. Same weight on the left side and everything. I'm using a sand wedge for this shot, which I recommend to, to all of you. And all I want you to do is get back in this same position. Now, one thing I want you to try and remember is to, to feel the distances. Whatever distance you take the club back, I'm going to use about a half swing for this, that I want to go through equally the same. This will keep your rhythm exactly the same through the swing, stop you from being too short and jerky going through. So I want it halfway back, halfway through. Let's try one. I just want to emphasize the arm action. By keeping the body still, relax your arms and almost make them feel heavy. I'm going to go halfway back, halfway through. Perfect. Right, we've come back to 80 yards now. 
I should think this is about the full length of most of you can hit a wedge. And really, I'm going to use what I would call a small full swing. It's going to be a nice, gentle full swing. I'm not, I don't want to force it. Obviously, now my body's starting to turn. I don't want to resist quite so much as a hands and arm action. I'm trying to let the whole thing swing. And I, as I said before, the 60 yard shot, take it all the way back and all the way through. Probably the most important thing here is to stay balanced. Line it up in a nice, full, easy swing. As you can see, I haven't taken much of a divot at all. I'm not trying to hit down on it excessively. All I'm trying to get right is my tempo. Nice, full swing, back and through. If you're having problems in getting 80 yards, go to your pitching wedge. I think you'll find that a lot easier. I'll hit one more for you. Right, we're moving on to the lob shot now. Now we have two balls here and two totally different situations. As you can see from the lie, I have one nice and fluffy lie just on the edge of the rough and I have one very tight lie. Now this is going to require two totally different shots, even though I'm trying to achieve the same thing. From the fluffy lie, the club is, we're trying to move the ball, club under the ball, nice and slowly, so that we're using just the loft of the club to loft it up. We're going to need a slightly longer swing and we're using really just the weight of the ball to lift it up and that will let it land softly. On the tighter lie, we're going to need a much faster hand action, a little bit more wrists, so we want to get under the ball and we're trying to nip it out of this tight lie, so we've got to be accelerating through the ball and hit a nice crisp shot. The tight lie is going to require a much faster hand action, hitting down on the ball, taking a divot, setting the club and, and going through quite firmly and quite quickly. Again, I want my weight on my left side, club face a little bit open, I'm going to set the club and then pull it through quite quickly, taking that divot. Let's try one. Keeping your head still all the time. Okay, a little bit firm on that one, but I'll show you the, the softer line now when the, the ball's sitting up. We're going to use the bounce of the club to go under the ball and that's going to lift the ball up into the air. So it's almost even though we're quite close to the green, we're playing like that 40-yard lob shot, the pitch shot rather. We're going to hit through the ball quite soft, a much softer hands and arms action. Because the club face is open considerably, we have to take quite a long swing because we're losing that length. We're trying to send the ball up and then land softly. So again, weight forward and quite a long, slow swing. As you can see, there is very little wrist action. All I'm trying to do is slide the club head under the ball and make sure you follow through. That's it for part three. The next video will be about everything around and on the green. Click on this video for part four. I'll also include all other parts in the description. Thanks for watching.